Hi, hope I'm not muted. No, looks okay. Um, is the music a bit too loud? Hmm, give me a second. Come on. Let me find this and drop it like this. Did it change anything? Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry, um, I was reading chat. Then I remembered what I wanted to talk about today. Then I remembered I received some email some time ago. Then I opened my inbox. Then I've seen another email in the inbox. Then I read that. Then I tried to found, find the in, uh, email I was looking for. And yeah, sorry. Hi. Nice seeing you all. I have headphones this time so I can hear finally the music. I never hear the music. Uh, so welcome um, to the uh, yeah very hot day here. Let me just check. Let's switch. Let's switch to mainstream. And this one here. So this is my current temperature. It's on the back of the apartment. It's thirty point thirty one. On the front, it's twenty seven point three. Um. And then we have dining room 27 living room 28 kitchen 27 bedroom almost 29 so it's a bit hot it is a bit hot uh, they promised us showers today even google for one hour was saying that it's 17 degrees outside with the heavy rain and no there was absolutely zero rain today so yeah yeah hot summer unfortunately we always postpone the air conditioning uh, installation every year and you of course know that there is either no way or the prices are too high or there is a too long queue to do it in the summer so yeah maybe next year but it's just three more months of summer so how's everybody doing uh, congrats Johnny on your pull request first merged into home assistant and yes let me change here as you can see it's working nicely I have all the icons I think that Mark has default one and once again um, we have an official sponsor of the stream Spar energy Spar budget energy drink this time tutti frutti yeah Spar isn't of course sponsor but this is the only time I drink energy drinks. Uh, they are okay. So, um, today we will be talking uh, about everything. If you have any kind of a question or something, just drop it here. And I have a bunch of stuff here on my desk. I want to go through it. Uh, oh, Midsummer. It is Midsummer. Hmm forgot about that 
I did, by the way, I did like the series Midsummer, but the uh, original series, not the newer one with the newer main act actor. Uh, Midsummer, how it's called in uh, Norway or something like that. No, it's not Norwegian series. Sorry, my brain is just too hot. My brain is not functioning anymore. Uh, so let's jump straight into this pile of whatever I have on my desk. So, uh, okay. In last Mail Day video, I showed you new event for this. And on Friday, I received batteries. So today at 7.20 in the morning, I already replaced uh vent and the battery in this one so this was my previous recording setup i had proxmox here um, and i had home assistant on xpenology here and i also had docker i had to replace it i'm not sure for what i will use this is really old machine now but i did put a lot of hey daniel let's check if i can see there is a lot of ram i think inside and uh, M2 disk is okay. I think it's 128 gig uh, SSD disk inside. Let's see. So yeah, I replaced the I replaced the battery and the vent. It should now work okay. I wanted to plug it in today, but uh, unfortunately. It looks like I've thrown away charger. So I don't have charger anymore. So I have to go out and buy charger. Come on. Okay. So we have Kingston. 128 NVMe and we have two modules let me get my come on I'm not sure I think it's I think it's four gigs so it has eight gigs inside uh maximum for this very old nook it's a nook from 2014 hi mitch hi chris yeah uh that's very old that's very old it's dccp let's google it let's google it it's obsolete now but it's still working dccp Is this one here okay let me just change the page let's get this to 150 percent msata ssd intel celeron 847 1.1 gigahertz yeah maximum two cores uh, maximum is also 110 16 is maximum i think i have eight inside it's really for the for the um it, it's 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 it was supposed to be multimedia uh uh, multimedia pc for um how it's called i forgot it it's a uh, a scala is uh you know for the for example for the banks for the branch offices they have it uh, behind the lcd screens to to drive the oh my god i forgot the word whatever uh so i got it after after user didn't need it anymore and it's still working i will probably directly install home assistant this time on it just to play with it <laughs> yeah um 
I have glasses somewhere. The problem with me is that I always lose glasses somewhere. And the next issue is that I haven't changed my glasses in a long, long time. So I have to get, if anybody has some good links for the, for the magnifying glasses. I also have that soldering hand, you know, like octopus with eight hands and the magnifying glass with the LEDs. But I don't like it. It's not stable. It's, it's, I hate it. So I don't use it. I have a lot of stuff that I bought try to use it and I don't use it. Okay, so I will probably not be recording anything about it, but I will have additional fifth or sixth test system for home assist. Okay, so this is the first thing. Let's move it out of the desk. Pozdrav Niksha. Thank you, Niksha. Um, let's see what we have next here. Oh, uh, this is something I have been playing with last couple of weeks. I cannot move it any closer because the USB cable is just too short. This is the, the same company that sent me the respad, sent me this whatever, 7 inch, 9 inch uh, touch screen with the acrylic backing and it really is nice to tuck everything away it even has an option to install the camera i think here um, you can install the, the the power or the power bank or the batteries here um, there is a room here for the uh, hard drive and once again i've installed home assistant directly on this on this machine meaning that it's not currently just displaying through the uh, web interface home assistant everything is running out of this touch touch panel um, it's a thick one so it would be hard to use it for anything else and if you follow me on twitter and i must thank jan from Switzerland for this one because he really helped me a lot. Although my soldering iron died or power supply, do you see a pattern? Power supply for the Nook, power supply for the uh, soldering iron. So I'm currently out of soldering iron. If you do not count those large ones, beefy ones for, I don't know, not electronics. Uh, I was searching for this rare commodity and Jan was great he found it in Switzerland I wasn't able to purchase it unfortunately they didn't ship from Switzerland so he bought it and sent it to me it's a Raspberry Pi 2 Raspberry Pi 2 uh, Raspberry Pi yeah <laughs> Raspberry Pi 0 2 W wireless um, and as you can see, the headers are still not soldered because, as I said, my soldering iron died. It also came with the SSD card and a bunch of cables. So what's my idea? I will be, I will be recording video on this 7-inch uh, display. I think I will once again go through setup how to install Home Assistant Supervite. So this is a... Let me try to navigate it i don't know how well you can see things here let's see if i can get us just a little bit closer so this is uh, where 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 people system add-ons the easiest way to check if something is supervised or not do you have add-ons or not so this is running full home assistant supervised and next thing i want to do is i'm still waiting for a couple of cables they should be here next monday or tuesday but i will not be recording video about it probably another two weeks three weeks is to see if i can make some kind of um some kind of uh, mount for this for wall to be able to install it in a plaster wall without this backside here 
and also run everything out of a Raspberry Pi 2.0 because Raspberry Pi 2.0 is a bit, bit better than Raspberry Pi 0, first generation. Hopefully I will manage to run everything out of that or if not, this is much cheaper version, although extremely hard to find lately, but it's cheaper than Raspberry Pi 4, so if you have Raspberry Pi 2, maybe this can be a nice in-wall panel with the touchscreen, etc. So this is... Uh, no. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't. So that's one of the projects I will be working very soon. And I'm really looking forward to I just have to have to get my soldering iron working again. Okay, these are spare mosquito tablets. Then uh yeah, why I was why I did run away. Uh hmm. Mattia, haven't seen you in a long, long time. How is your newborn doing? Have you been getting any sleep? So, uh, yeah. Next week. Next week. Next week, there will be video on SwitchBot Pan Tilt Cam and also... Switchbot indoor cam. I will be doing I will be doing uh, two versions. So first one will be using Switchbot app. If you are using Switchbot app, you cannot get the stream. At least I didn't find a way to get a stream into Home Assistant, but you can get alerts. So you can use the API and get notified if the motion is detected and things like that. Um, that's one thing. And the other one will be using, uh, and the other one will be how to get SwitchBot Pen Tilt Cam and also SwitchBot Indoor Cam into Home Assistant. And also there will be a giveaway. I will be giving away this box. This one is unopened, sealed. So I will be giving away this SwitchBot Pen Tilt Cam because I think I have to give it away. <laughs> um, they sent me two. Um, I'll definitely keep one to play with. Uh, but this one will be... There will be a giveaway for this camera in the next video uh, because they are having also some kind of SwitchBot version of Prime Day, even better discount sale with the I think they'll also be making a, um, some kind of raffle or giveaway where you can win iPhone 14 or something like that what was the latest version of iPhone uh, I still have to do something about this one. Oh, Johnny <laughs> but I will be making uh, it looks like I will be having more cooperation future with SpeechBot and I think that something is in the works for the autumn and yeah I will not be making any kind of spoilers about that but there will be a lot more giveaways so I have to make a video on that and I don't know I mean I will also maybe be making a, a giveaway I have two of them I want to keep one just for testing purposes why oh, I'm using this cam I have this cam um so i'll probably be giving away one of these i still have the other one somewhere then something i'm really looking forward to is this one here so it's a switchbot lock <laughs> sleep is luxury yeah 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 don't worry it will get even worse don't worry it will get even worse uh, no, how how do they say? Uh, smaller kids, smaller problems. Bigger kids, bigger problems. Uh, so switchbot lock. This is the lock that was released, I think, last week or something like that. This is a US lock. 
I don't know what I'll do after I record video on it. Maybe I will be giving it also away. It's a very simple. I lost something. Desk space is commodity. So it's a very simple uh, device. I, I love, you know, uh, there is, there is, there are a couple of ways on how you can sell products. For example, Sonoff. Box. Small manual device. And that's it. By the way, I have to do with about this one too. And there is a old style or switchboard style. This one, this this paper in my hand should be inside this envelope, but I took it out. They include wet wipe to clean the door before you glue this lock onto it. So everything is inside. It's not plain paper. It's plastified. Everything just fills up to this point premium. Really. Screwdriver included, which costs pennies. The lock itself is part metallic. This part here is metallic. This everything here is plastic. This you cannot feel the motor on it. Um, and let me get this box out. So everything else is here. It's NFC tags, so you can have tags, for example, at your night desk. And when you put your phone on the night desk, it will automatically lock the door. Uh, spare glue for the lock nuts i'll show you for what and also well door sensor is included and how it works it works similar like other locks for example nuki which i have so you just select what type of uh what type of the deadlock deadbolt you have you install it here, remove this part here and glue it on the door. And then it turns and locks and unlocks the door. Uh, because this is for the deadbolt, you cannot use it on the EU doors unless you have handle on the outside. If you are using your key to unlock the door, this one currently doesn't handle it. There should be EU version they should there should be EU version of this later this year and let me try to open it uh i think it needs to go this way and this way i don't like type of the batteries because they remind me of the they remind me of the shelly door and window sensor so it's cr 123a two batteries and this here is the metallic plate. Depending on the distance of the deadbolt from your door, you can move this. Sorry, you can move this out or push it in. It's really nice device, and I will be making a video on it. And I did have to put a bit of extra effort because I'm in the EU. I'm not Paul Hibbert, so I didn't receive the whole door to test it with. So I had to go to a, a local locksmith, uh, found that bolt that works with this one, asked him for permission, and probably next week I will be going there to record video on it. So that will be my first field video. Okay. Then what we have here? Oh. Um, 
Hey, Kemi. Nice seeing you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Or I didn't stream. I think that two weeks ago I should have had a stream, but uh, one of my friends from work or colleagues had a 40th birthday party, so we were out of town. I wasn't there for a long time, but yeah, I couldn't make a stream. Uh, so this is uh, ESP32 C3 Dev Kit 1, and this kit was used, this kit was bought and used for the Home Assistant Matter Workshop. I know that a couple of people already have released videos on it, so I will not be making a Matter video. I did test everything uh, before the workshop, and uh, I really like the concept of the Matter. It's it's very similar to Shelly 2 PM or Shelly Pro 2 PM has the same uh, has the same principles. You have Bluetooth that helps you configure the device, and after you configure it, you can disable the Bluetooth part and just use the Wi-Fi. Or you can leave the Bluetooth and use Bluetooth for local control. So it's it's very it's very it's very nice. I have two of them. I'm not sure what else I will be doing with it. Then uh, Atom Light. I've sh already shown this one. It's uh, Atom Echo, and you can use it with how it's called Raspi. You can use it with Raspi as a media player device or device for speech to text and text to speech the quality of the speaker is really not that good but i think that uh, on that matter work no on the, uh, the on the other so there was a uh, home assistant matter workshop and they after that there was a, a esp media whatever workshop they also showed this one how it can play the media and some of the info we part of the creators network home assistant creators network so meaning that those that were that that were that are currently members of the of the network on the discord we got the notification that Home Assistant devs are working with Raspi devs and that they are trying to simplify the onboarding process, uh, installation of everything to make it, you know, just plug and play, you install Raspi. And if you do not know what Raspi is, let me let me quickly find mouse for it. This mouse is for this device. Yeah, no, touch screen and mouse. Don't, don't ask me. Let me switch here. Uh, so, Respi is a local, no cloud equivalent of voice assistant. It allows you to set up wake words. It allows you to then do uh, intents or send intents somewhere. In this case, the intents go towards the home assistant. They get processed. They have some kind of a feedback. And then that feedback is spoken to the uh, whatever media device you are using. For the test purposes, I was using this Echo device. And Wake Up Words uh, really work nice. It nicely recognizes everything, but the biggest issue is for each thing that you want to learn your system to do, you have to type the commands by hand. So the idea is to somehow to try to somehow, you know, um, simplify the process and, and make Home Assistant do part of that task automatically. I don't know if my system is responsive or not. On the Discord I posted, I had some issues with the system previously, before the stream, a couple of minutes before the stream. Um, I, didn't, I, don't have, I don't have SwitchBot bot, I, I have no I, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I haven't pushed commits 239 changes. So let's find where it is. I have here intents. Okay, here. So get time. If I create command that would for example on the on the recipe you create a listening command. So it is listening for, for example, 
what time is it or what time or something like that. Then it calls this get time intent, which then is processed by Home Assistant and it sends back the text to speech. The current time is blah blah. Um, change light works in similar. So, for example, I would say turn uh, Elgato light to 50%. Then it would say turning Elgato light to 50% and do the same thing. It would turn, okay, this is not brightness, it's turn on and off. Sorry, not brightness, but turn on Elgato. And it would then target it and do action what you want to do. Same thing here, for example, what is my current speed? What is the internet speed? It would then process it and return the answer current internet speed is whatever internet speed currently is. So it's a really nice way but it's labor intensive for each and every thing that you want to control you have to create your own intents and this is something that probably a lot of users wouldn't want to do and as far as i know uh, they're currently working on it how to simplify this setup process so for example what time is it tell me the time would return you the time was the temperature how hot or how cold it is etc so yeah, this is this is why I have this one, but we were looking at something else and that something else is this Atom Light. Uh, it's similar to this one. And ah, let me get it out. But it's much thinner. All those devices have headers on the underside with the schematics, which is a really neat thing. Uh, this one is one button. This one, I don't know if it's, I think it's reset no, or just another button. And it has also LED here. And it can be used, for example, to create a button with it. Really simply just a button. And while I was buying this one, for which I still do not know what I will do with it. I've seen this one. Uh, how did you get it out? I forgot. Okay. No, 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 no. Don't break. Don't break. Okay. Header pins. There is add-on for the infrared here. Uh, or I think it's infrared is already embedded here. Oh, my glasses. Let's look. It has button, button, buzzer, infrared and LED already on it. It has also gyro inside. I think that it's You see how I move it? It moves the box. Time. It's a bit off. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, eight, six, five, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It has uh, acoustic sensor, infrared, it's sending codes currently, and Bluetooth. And it's all packed in a watch. So if you want to carry your projects with you, this is an awesome device. And as I said, you have header pins and you have some additional options that you can buy. USB-C here, uh, you can also use this port for programming too. It has internal battery and I think it uh, turns off after, I don't know, something. It's great, it's awesome. I, 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 I have no idea what I'll do with it, but it was just so awesome, I had to get it. I like the voice analyzer. Nice. 
So these are some of the things and I still have one additional box here on the desk. Let me just One, two, three, four, five. Nope, wrong button. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Off. And just a second. Yay, managed to get everything inside box. And I was also on the Synology event a couple of weeks ago, around first week of June or something like that. And I got this one. It was a raffle. There was one blogger from Croatia and me, plus local partners and you had to answer certain questions and i won this one first and second prizes were this synology disk station i'm still not sure i have one idea what i could potentially do so there are two options either i will be giving it away or keeping it doing one project with it um this one is the smallest Synology this station, and no, you cannot run Home Assistant out of it. Come on. One Ethernet port, two USB ports, one blower. And only one hard disk. Hey, Andrea! So this is the smallest unit. Uh, it's a 120. One meaning that it only can handle one hard drive. And 20 is the year of the model. So it's 2020. As I said, I'm still not 100% sure what I'll do with it. Uh, there are, as I said, there are two options. One is to install it somewhere and try to use it as NBR, because there will be one location where I will be needing a network video recorder for cams, but I'm not sure how many cams, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, um, how many cams this one can handle i think i need something that can handle at least four cameras so after i i figure out if this is sufficient or not if not i will be making a giveaway and johnny yeah uh no worries but as i said uh the problem with this one is it's it's not intel it's not uh amd processor it's the whatever I'm not sure what this one is here so um it's limited you cannot use docker on it you cannot use virtual you cannot use virtual machine on it it only can be uh either like a remote drive or private cloud or backup server or photo station or some kind of not very good media player media center so yeah that's why that's why i'm not sure what to do with it and uh but it was it was i really didn't expect that one. Oh, they, by the way and i also have mm, synology shirt <laughs> and i ended up in the newspapers too <laughs> but that's a local joke Lo not local joke but it is a i was really in the in the in the newspapers but that was a joke on how i ended up there so um they're really a lot of stuff here i think that some of the other stuff that i received i showed this is one of the things i have or i will be recording i've seen one video already about them out 
I wish I had two of the Zigbee modules, but I don't have, I only have one Zigbee. So this is the subsystem smart switch. This goes behind your uh, switch in the wall and it can handle up to the two switches per one box. This one is still closed. They're the same. They're the same. So uh, I received two kits. This one is the Zigbee kit and this one is home kit. Um, I will be giving away probably this one here and uh, I'm not sure about this one. The difference is the standards. So this one is working on the Wi-Fi. This one is working on the Zigbee. And there is a third option of uh, Z-Wave. I, I, asked, I asked them not to send me Z-Wave because I do not have any Z-Wave stick. And I cannot even try to pair any devices. So they've sent me this one, which is HomeKit compatible and uh, Wi-Fi based and this one that is Zigbee. It can be used as an independent device so you can just hook this up under your lamp uh, in the ceiling or something like that or you can use it uh, and then control it via the app or home assistant because it's Zigbee. I don't think that there is a converter at this point but when I create video I also make a custom converter for it hopefully double-sided tape so you can also glue it on the lamp or ceiling or in the box or whatever uh, neutral neutral li uh, live and out so neutral has to come to this really uh, what what you could do and how I envision this is so you take uh, current ceiling uh, lamp you remove the wires hook up one to neutral here then out to the lamp same thing live to here and live out and you just you know steal the power from the light and then this is a just pure ordinary uh, zigbee device i know uh i know johnny but thing is that i cannot even test anything without 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 uh, z-wave stick but i also don't have in uh, any kind of intention of buying z -Wave stick because I know that my home will not be relying on that technology. I already have Wi-Fi, unfortunately some Bluetooth and Zigbee and that's it. So this is the uh, this is the smart relay and this is the sub assembly smart switch, which really is just uh, it is uh, let's this one is open. Let me just put this in a drawer. So uh, on the other hand, if you already have a switch in the wall and want to control the light also via the switch and uh, you want to keep the switch so you can either use it, you use the app or home assistant, you have this smart switch sub assembly, but look at the size. Let's compare it to the, on my, my drawers. Let's compare it with the Shelly. So you see this one is really 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 small it's a bit thicker but it's really small but also it doesn't have relay inside so what you would do is and it's great because you don't have to use neutral for this one you take these wires here for the switch one or switch wall switch two so you have option of using switch on the wall that has two uh two two switches and then you plug the wire live wire that was arriving to this switch here and the wire that would normally go towards your bulb would go for light one here light two here and as i said each light bulb or each ceiling light or each of the devices that you have spread on two switches would then need one of these smart relays. It's really nice. It's really nice concept. Uh, goes like 
this. But I simply haven't had the time to do it. And since I currently do not have any device, uh, this goes here. Since I currently do not have any device that I can install this on, I had to go out and buy wires, connectors for electricity, uh, bulb socket, everything. So I will be making on my desk some kind of fake system to show how to install everything. Yeah. And I simply haven't had the time. To be honest, I I, I just, I received, she for example, I received Shelly Shelly one, uh, Shelly Pro, or Shelly Plus, 2 p.m. About, I don't know, almost a year ago. And I only installed it yesterday. And it was also a painful process. I had to remove the wires from the wall, pull everything out to the junction box. And then I had three wires in the wall. I had to pull in four wires, neutral, alive, in, to live out so I can install the uh, Shelly 2 p.m. And I finally have Shelly 2 p.m. I really like the UI of those plus devices. Let's let me quickly show you for this one. I don't know if you've seen the UI of the of the of the uh, Shelly plus devices. So um, this is 2 p.m., meaning that it can handle two different relays and it also measures power consumption. I have balcony light. Okay, let's go back. You have device information, SNTP, device name, firmware version, location. Location is the location is then used to calculate your time. Reboot factory set authentication debug echo mode, which I have enabled and have zero idea what's it for. Device profile. Networks is used to set up the Wi Fi. Oh, let me disable access point. Uh, cloud is disabled, so this is working only on my network, which is why I really like. What's this? Connected to. Ah, MQTT. That's why I really like Shelly, Shelly devices. I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't flash them with the ESP. Uh, Son of Mini. Victor, remind me in a couple of seconds. If I forget, I have show, uh, Son of Minis on my desk. I still haven't also done that video. Cloud is disabled, Bluetooth is disabled, and MQTT is unable currently because I have um, MQTT. I'm using MQTT to connect to my home assistant. Scripts, you can create various scripts, but I don't do that. And what's great is each Come on. Each of the relays or each of the switch switches can then have different configuration. So for example, balcony light, I can set channel settings, input output settings. Currently I have push button and it's uh, configured in such a way that each time you push it, it changes the state. So it toggles between on and off. Uh, you can also use detached. I know that a lot of people like it. I really wish. I, I was really hoping. They were saying that when when they when they when they said that they will be sending me these 2 p.m. They also said that they will send me four uh, Shelly plus four, and I was really looking forward to play with that one because that one doesn't have a single relay. It's just faceplate with four four buttons. Then then you can program to do whatever, and you can have that. You know, for example. Uh, leave house, enter house, uh, set to morning routine, set to evening routine. It, that's really awesome. So that's also great here because you can use this in a detached mode. The switch itself then wouldn't turn the light on and off. And then you can use that for whatever you want inside your smart home. In, in our case, or in my case, home assistant. Uh, and I've selected that this is a button. It can be either switch or a button. So this is for each of the channels. I will just show you for Velcalin light. For example, when I turn it on, 
it's 6.5 watt, watts, watts, mark watts, math works, timers, schedules, and of course, webhooks. I didn't create any webhook, but you can create webhooks. Let's see. Uh, On, off, push, long push, double push. I didn't even play with this one. I should really, re really try to, to capture the states of uh, long push or double push. Hmm, that's great. I didn't even know that this one has it. So you can, on each action, if it's not, if it's in a detached state, you can create multiple actions based on the type of the pushes or whatever. And as I said, you can do this for both of the devices. The same configuration or different configuration can be used for different different buttons. And I also bought, finally, we have, we've been in this apartment for six years, I think. Finally, I bought the balcony light, which should have been here last Tuesday, but it's, yeah, late. It will be probably here on Monday. And if it's here on Monday, I will be installing it and finally having normal. I still have wire hanging and the light bulb just attached to that wire on the on the balcony yay finally uh when i was doing that i was i was even thinking of let me get back and i will compare the uh, son of mini bog uh uh -huh, okay bog lepo se provedi Matija. Uh, what's the price? I haven't... Let me, let me, let me, let me try to... Products. Products, products. Let's look at this home kit enabled. Yeah, for for both smart smart relay and smart switch, it's thirty seven euros. It's not cheap. It's really not cheap. I wouldn't. I, I don't. I I wouldn't say that it, it is worth that much. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's worth that much. So, um, is this it? This is more or less the same concept, if I'm not mistaken. So this is this part here, and this is this part here. Wow. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, it's completely opposite. Sonoff is completely opposite to the to this E V V R. Neutral, neutral, live in, live out, and this is. Switch module. Yeah, this is smart switch, but this is smart switch. And it, it is total size or total Son of is much bigger. Even if this one is smaller, it's still much bigger in the space you need for this combo. I think that this combo is the same as as the as this one here. I always have this one. It's every every mini. Let's check. No, 
Wrong. Sorry. My bad. My bad. My bad. Let's roll the stream from the beginning. My bad. I will again receive hate mail. This one is in combo with this one. So these two together are same as these two together. Yay, I figured it out finally. You connect this to multiple switches. It can handle up to three, one, two, three. And then you run wires from here to Now, once again, I'm wrong. Oh my God, we will figure it out. But then it's even bigger. And then you have multiple these connected to the lights or whatever devices you are controlling. So this goes in your uh, switch panel where the switches are up to three switches can be handled and then on the load you connect these to control the load yep nice but it's it's look at the sizes this one is much smaller so if if you are not looking at the pricing if you are looking at you know how do i fit everything wherever i need to fit this one these two would be much easier to fit anywhere uh and as for the shellies what shall we look shelly one shelly one plus or shelly one plus pm or shelly one l let's look at shelly one pm Yeah, this is the Shelly 1 PM. Shelly plus 1 PM. I always, I always forget it's called plus and not pro. So this is the first mistake. So if you hear on my video that I say pro, it really is plus. And plus goes not after model name. It goes before it. I don't... Um, I know that a lot of people, Victor, I know that a lot of people do that, but I don't use Tasmota and I, I really hope that I will never ever have to use Tasmota. Uh, for the shell devices, I think they are great because you can really have nice working system, local only, without any app needed or anything uh, with the original firmware. And I think that the newer firmware, which is the plus version of the firmware is even better um, it's very configurable you can um, edit very easily to home assistant for example so that's why that's why i really like really really like shellys um, the next thing that i like is i like zigbee devices because i don't care who created the firmware if it can be hooked up to either ZHA, which I don't use, but I can use, I have test set up with it, or Zigbee to MQTT, you just, you know, pair it and that's it. I don't care about the, the software in itself. Um, I have, I, I um, yeah, as you can see, I have those two Sonop devices here for a long time. I've already showcased them a couple of times. They're still in the box. Uh, I don't use Sonoff that much. I had my first device that I had was Sonoff base device. Um, I had to flash it. When I was flashing it, I had to decide if I will go ESP Home or Tasmota. I went ESP Home, and for me, it's working great. It's been running for a couple of years now. But. Uh, I don't know why that I I don't know why yeah I'm I'm not that much into 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 uh, Sonoff devices although they have great devices 
And they have they're pinging me constantly. I, if any of you was here, I know Johnny was here. Uh, fallback feature when using the. What do you mean by that, Dame? Yeah, Sh Shelly One L is uh, the one that doesn't need neutral, but you have, um, you have to use Shelly Bypass. And I see that they've now started to include also the capacitor with it. So you have bypass and very large flat capacitor that is used uh, to iron out the power because some of them burned out. Yeah, yeah, Mark, I agree with I, I agree with that. It's it's really it's really it's really the stock firmware is. Um, when you when you when I talk about devices and how I do some things and I then I get asked why I did something this way or why I do something that way. So for example, just look at it like this there are a lot of people that are just starting with with home automation and and i really would like to show them that they can do things without an extra effort though that some of the devices out of the box are good enough or sufficient or or whatever if you start you know like uh, paul hibbert uh, was joking about home assistant users but it really did look like that and if anybody wants to dispute that, I would just say, okay, go, don't use Nabucasa and go install Google Assistant or Amazon's Assistant. You know, you just add one line to your configuration, then open developer account, then open the API, then open a new project, then pull the credentials here, then install this, then install that, then open the ports, then, you know, it's it's it can be overwhelming and it can push users out of it or not, if they find too many obstacles, if they, if they find too many obstacles in first couple of steps, they will quit. And that's why that's why uh, I try to keep things as stock as po where where possible as stock as possible. It simplifies the process. Uh, Tasmota is great. Uh, yeah, Tasmota is 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 great. Uh, although I I use Home Assistant, this different route. Uh, but Tasmota is great if you want to tinker. It's not. It's not for my dad, who maybe is watching this also. Not saying that my dad probably couldn't do something in Tasmota, but he just she just doesn't see a point. You know, we were we, we, when we started with with uh, with uh, home automation or home assistant at work. We were joking like yeah i spent the whole weekend but finally i can turn the light bulb on and off and you know it's like my wife she knows she sometimes tells me that she now feels less inclined to use some things at home because they require her more steps or steps that she doesn't feel natural than when she only used switch to do something so uh that's that's the reason why some of my videos go one way or not the other way for example uh i told you a couple of times or a couple of times in streams and in videos i tell i told that i don't like bluetooth i like bluetooth i have a bunch of devices that use bluetooth but bluetooth is really tricky and uh so are the shellic sensors also victor's cell sensors are Uh, if you buy anything from Shelly and you can buy everything besides door and window sensor and temperature and humidity sensor but for the temperature and humidity sensor you have also option to buy dock where it then updates values frequently where it doesn't heat up and give you false results although I did see it also that so Everything from Shelly besides sensors is great uh, and also sensors that are powered by the mains. So I have also gas leak sensor, a CNG sensor, and it's also, I don't know if it's working great. You know, it's like, it's like I bought a house that should be seismic proof. 
And how do you test seismic proof house? You have to wait for the way, uh, for the quake. You know. So, um, uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if if I've been if I've been clear about it uh, or not. I really try to keep things as simple as possible. One of the things is when the when the switchbot came approached me last year uh, to do video on the uh, curtains. I said don't because I don't have a single curtain, which is true. Uh, I don't have a single curtain in my apartment, and they wanted to send something. You know, they they, they say listen, I have, I have that guy on the internet. He has possibility to reach five thousand people with his video. We will invest in him 50 bucks by sending him free stuff, which at the end costs us not 50 bucks, but I don't know, 25 or 30, 25 or 30 bucks. Okay, they do send it expert shipping, so shipping usually costs more than stuff itself. And I said sure because I also like to create content. If 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 I spend a lot of my money onto this, but I would have 50% less of the content if I wouldn't receive a bunch of this stuff, and I really like when I can also give some free stuff away. I'm not even, I, maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, I'm jumping, jumping. So I will have a channel anniversary if I live up to the September and don't either die or quit the YouTube rage quit or something. Uh, maybe I can hold on to a lot of that stuff and we can, we can make once again a big uh, giveaway in September with all the bunch all the stuff that that i received that i don't use that it's some of it will be brand new in unopened boxes so maybe that's a good idea uh <laughs> yeah wow something is nasty you can you see you've seen it here fly whoa ah. okay so um what i was what i was saying um switchbot sent me meter which is their previous temperature and humidity sensor plus i asked them to send me the humidifier because of all of the devices they make i thought that this one is is is, is great it was around october and i knew that heating season would start and the heating season always reduces the humidity in the apartment so i said listen this is something that will be hot topic or dry topic very soon let me play with that and at the same time they sent a bunch of other influencers content creators uh whatever smart home enthusiasts let's call it like that uh i should make a t-shirt i'm smart home uh influencer then slash uh and and under it or above it write uh, uh enthusiasts yeah um, so the the lot of people that were creating content at that point were creating stuff. Let me just kill this cam and go to my pretty face. Ah, pretty face. So um, they were creating content, how to connect switchboard curtains, switchboard meter, switchboard bot to home assistant without cloud uh, via the Bluetooth and. I know that a lot of people live in apartments. Some live in very small apartments, but there are a lot of people that that have large houses, uh, one floor, two floors, big that cannot be covered with, for example, one Bluetooth device. So you have to have multiple Bluetooth devices. And what if there is a some cases where you have to have additional Bluetooth devices just to control something that you can control via the cloud. So that's why I created video that uses the cloud API. I know that a lot of people will never ever use cloud for some of the services. And I, I respect that. I, I'm okay with it. I, on the other hand, I don't have issues with cloud services. I sell cloud services every day. We all use cloud services, be it Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, whatever. We use them all day. Other people will say that, you know, um, yeah, but, you know, Chinese are, Chinese are 
listening in or tapping in the data. They are not the first and the last ones. I worked in a couple of army projects for the NATO. <laughs> we don't talk about Bruno, let's call it like that. And I will not get this video once again demonetized about talking about similar stuff, but I don't have an issue with them. I have less issue with them listening and tapping in into my uh, uh, data than I have with the local, regional, continental or western countries doing that. They cannot do anything to me. These here can do something to me. So I have less issues. I have issues with people looking at private data, but I have less possible risks with that than I have with them. Okay, then we can we can say that but yeah, there are loopholes and, and they can they can they can break in your system. Okay, yeah, that's right. They can. It's much easier if there is a, a, a governmental sponsored way to break in your system than if you would have to use something else but anybody can break in any system no system is unpenetrable and unfortunately i i do a lot of security projects and i work with a company that does a lot of security projects everything can be breaked in it's just a matter of time money and will if there is a will to break into my smart home, somebody will find a way. And there are a lot of ways. I can name you a couple of them. So so that's 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 one thing. So uh, and also uh, Simon, uh, Simon uh, as you said, it all depends for what. Okay, so just bear in me. I don't know if I will be able to uh, if for example, I would be using cloud home control, I would never go into smart home industry or content creation, or I would not ever make my home dependent on the cloud. Never. If I pull the plug out of my internet provider, my home will still work. Not 100%, but all the lights will work. Heating, I think, will work. Uh, sensors will work, so alarm will work. So these are the things that are not directly connected to the to the uh, cloud. But some of the services from the cloud are okay. Uh, the question is, I have a lot of back and forth because of that with the SwitchBot cam and indoor cam and pan tilt cam. There is no way you can use this camera internal only but on the other hand people don't have any kind of issue with using i don't know nest door lock or whatever door lock door not door lock uh, my brain is it's, it's getting colder but it's still not cold enough any any um, uh, um ring so there are a lot of devices that are doorbells that are connected to the cloud that have camera that have zero or limited or partial local control. You know, why would you want to have a ring if uh, it would be local only and you are at work? With home assistant, I'm, I'm just not talking about home assistant, not integration with home assistant. I'm talking about pure devices. You know, you don't have open hub, you don't have home assistant, you don't have any kind of smart home system. You just have NOS, uh, Nest uh, uh, doorbell. You have to have cloud. For any of the cameras, you have to have cloud. So the question is, would my friend who has a little kid find use in a SwitchBot indoor cam, which only works in the cloud. Yes, he would. He's not using Home Assistant. He, would Home Assistant users buy um, SwitchBot indoor cam? There are some fringe cases. There are some fringe cases. Sorry, I was, I was rambling for a long time. I will go back to those fringe cases. Let me just check. Um, share the yeah. Uh, um, 
Akara sensors, I really like Akara sensors. P1 sensor, I will never ever buy. It's just too expensive. I, I wouldn't, I don't know for what, uh, people like it, I like it. I like also Tesla, but I cannot afford Tesla, you know? Um, and I think that it's wasting money to give something, to buy sensor that is that much expensive. If they send me, I will test it. I will probably put it somewhere. I don't know. I don't have use case, that good use case that some people have for that sensor, but I believe it's it's, it's okay, but it's just too expensive. Uh, cloud is good example for file storing or video content. Yeah, it is. And I use Netflix. I use Disney Plus. I use HBO Max, how it's called now. These are cloud services. I moved a lot of my clients to the cloud. Partially, completely, mail only, whole systems. And I'm talking, I'm working with enterprise customers. I'm not talking about some small company, locally creation small, but large companies. Um, but I myself, as a private person, have tendency to keep stuff. I have private cloud. I have Synology. This is my private cloud. It is accessible from where I need it to be accessible. When I go out in my office, I can access from my office directly all the documents or all the information that is stored on my private cloud and I can also access the information that I need to access in a company cloud whatever the cloud is yes um, but as you said Damien, everything that needs fast responses that needs to be critically that has to be crucial in, in whatever situation, it has to have a local dependency. But on the other hand, we are we are present on the Ukraine market. Um, and as I mentioned a couple of streams ago, uh, and also received some hate mails in regard to that, um, people just cannot decide if I'm pro-Russian or hate uh, Russians. So I, I've, I've, I've managed to be, be on the two hit lists. One is the guys who think that all russians should be whatever and uh i'm also on the list of persons hating them so i managed to to get that there um so the they arrived here and just imagine it your country currently we are not talking about politics we're just talking about economics here and it we're talking about it and imagine that you are a local company, for example, providing utility, local utility company. Okay, local utility company. And you track the billing for people in in your area that you cover. You have to uh, issue invoices. You get built something. You have to track the infrastructure, the servicing, the parts, the stocks, the people location of your vehicles, location of your electrical poles or whatever, whatever you're having. And the war starts. And it was, it was really fascinating to see the shift to cloud. Because the cloud was the only way to save yourself for a lot of companies in Ukraine. I don't know about a lot of companies. I don't know about the other companies. I know that some of the large cloud providers, and I will be not marketing them because I don't own them anything and they don't own me anything and I will not be giving them free advertisement. But a lot of companies when they went and said, okay, listen, if you're a company from that region, Ukraine, uh, you can use our services, any of our services, free of charge until the end of this this year, calendar year. And a lot of companies, really a lot of companies had overnight task of moving all of their infrastructure in cloud because it was the only way to protect it because then the building can get hit and all the data will be protected. So the question is, is your data safer locally or in cloud? 
that's that's my that's that's my point when I was talking about the uh, about the about the uh, security. It's different cloud in from perspective of a home user, a corporate user, uh, somebody who is professionally IT, somebody who is not professionally IT. For example, in I think in the last video, in the last video. Uh, mail day video ash uh thank you it's that that keyboard on the screen here is not this keyboard here i loved that keyboard but it lacked the uh, numpad so i had to go back to my old one that has a numpad also um yeah uh johnny as you said um uh, as you said Customers are nervous about moving to cloud, uh, but I agree with them. Um, 10 years ago, something like that, I was selling a lot of... Hey, Stefan! Uh, 10, 10 years ago, I was selling or more. I was selling a lot of Cisco equipment and Palo Alto became more prominent and it was chipping away the firewall market slowly. It was before the FortiGate time. And most of my customers are traditional customers, which I will not be talking about the industry, but you can get with tradition, you can usually get what kind of companies are traditional companies. So they were buying ASA, ASA from, from Cisco. And then came Palo Alto and it started pushing with very low, yeah, it started with, they started with the Palo Alto started with a very low, very low uh, pricing. So how Cisco worked, you, you bought the device, then you get either PSRT or SmartNet support for one, three, five years. Then if you wanted, you would, you would uh buy additional support when this expires etc but you will you didn't even have to you had you had piece of hardware you had firmware you would re be receiving new versions of firmware and you you had hardware that would work at least five seven years if not more and then came palo alto and said okay listen you can get the same machine for 50 percent of the price and everybody was like ka-ching 50 of the price yeah go palo alto go 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 and it was really starting to sell nicely until people figured out hey we bought subscription we cannot just buy first year of support we have to pay each year that support that is more expensive than the one that we had on the firewalls there so in five or seven years total cost of ownership would be very similar at that point for asa and for the for the uh palo alto and then came the fortigate and then, then really came the, you know, you don't even have to buy a switch. You can buy the switch in the cloud. Paradigm or whatever it's called. People, people were really afraid of moving towards the subscription because they are losing control. You do not know what will be the pricing of the service in six months. Not a lot of companies have clear, not a lot of companies have clear, um, stand on the inflation or year-to-year -year price growth I, I know that a couple of couple of companies have very firm and strict rules on price increase for example i know that ibm had they call it inflation whatever each year the price of everything would go these three five seven percent up i also work with 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 one application performance monitoring company that I featured in a couple of my videos, um, they have, I think, 2% or 1.7% yearly increase in prices, which if you buy and commit for longer periods, period, they waive off, so you don't have that. If you are committed only to short-term periods, each year there is a price increase. And you add that to your trust to cloud services. What would happen what would happen now if, for example, uh, what would happen now, for example, if Microsoft decides 
to increase prices of the M365 O365 E3 packages 50%. They can do it. I don't say that they, they have monopoly, but they really do have a large chunk of the market. Or what would happen if somebody bought Tuya data centers? You know, there are millions of Tuya devices out there. And they said, okay, no problem. It's just like 50 cents per device per month. For average home user, they would say, hey, listen, I have, you know, camera and door sensor and that's it. I would pay $1 a month. Okay, it's $12 a year. Who cares? Yeah, we would pay a bunch of money for that. So that's the other uh, the other thing. These, the, the possible cost, possibility of bankruptcy, possibility of data leak. But yeah, so uh, do we have anything fun to talk or I'm going to be talking about the conspiracy theories again and get my videos demonetized. LibreOffice. LibreOffice. I got one new user to LibreOffice last week. Yeah. Um, on this PC, this this recording setup, which I have to look what's going on. It's it's it, I feel like it's has some issues. Um, I have LibreOffice, and I've been using OpenOffice later LibreOffice for very 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 long time for my private use. For the company use, I have to use Microsoft Office. I work really a lot with Microsoft really a lot yeah so any questions what we'll be looking at next who's installed uptime kuma i know that johnny has this is how my current system looks my website is 100 percent up which even if it would be not up nobody would care because i don't have any content there uh, my main home assistant is currently at 99.58%, which is below the SLA that I promised of 99.99. But I have um, I've made a lot of reboots today. I was working on, I was fixing a lot of things inside home assistant, so I had to reboot it a couple of times. MQTT is 100%, storej node 1 and 2 are 100%, and this node is at my father's place because... I uh, confiscated part of his whole, uh, hard drive and his hard drive is also now featuring store J node. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, it's hot. Let me just oh 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 one once again a professional professional YouTuber. So, let's pretend. Oh, anybody installed Uptime Kuma? I know that Johnny did. So, this is my website. <laughs> These are the statistics. Yeah, I have a lot of red for the main setup because I was resetting it. And my father stored your note. You are now, you are now <laughs> fixed professional youtuber I can always blame it on the heat let me just check oh it's 26.3 outside so it's currently one to two degrees cooler than inside nice <laughs> Yes, you are. You are famous YouTuber. You are, you are, you are for the only the only person that has more subscribers now is Luis. He has about 80, 85,000, I think, something like that. If that that chap called Matt Work, Aaron, Jeff from Slacker Labs, uh, and 
Gio and me combined, we have more than you. So, yeah. I haven't seen Jeff in a long time. I've seen his... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, no. I haven't. This is one of my... This is one of the tasks on my to-do list, Mark, for a long time. Um, uh, and I think... I will be doing it probably on on vacation. I have to I have to see what I will be doing with this PC. It's it's now getting very old. It has enough of RAM, it has good enough drives, but it simply cannot handle all that stuff here anymore. And I've seen some stuttering stut stuttering or what's called in the images today. I had to close down some apps, which is something that didn't happen previously. I think that maybe it's because of the latest update of Microsoft, which was installed a couple of days ago, so there was like a lag in the in the in the image, and I cannot have that. Um, I want to do that, but if you're on Discord, hopefully next week you will see something fun. I will, of course, show it first in the in the uh, uh, supporters channel, which is the closed group for the YouTube channel members. I've ordered something. I have zero use for it, but it's really. Uh, this is the season where it when it has to be used, and I really want to see how it works because it opens. If you look some of the other videos I created about that content or around that content, this one would be really really nice addition and and I'm, I'm really looking forward to do video it will be a zigbee device i know that there are similar zivev devices i didn't see a wi-fi device and if there is a wi-fi device i wouldn't buy it because of the two reasons this device for me at least i think has to be a battery operated not mains operated and if would be if it would be wi-fi and battery operated it would also be bad because the life uh, of the batteries would be very short so i really look i really am looking forward to to this piece of machinery arriving next week uh, and uh i have i have one dilemma um the 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 uh let me just switch you here so this is my current temperatures um pcb way has been pushing a lot to do cooperation i was i was i got everything for the doorbell uh which is called zintercom which was previously featured on modcom.ru and now people are really starting flame wars and everything if you mention that something is even done by russian people so i decided to postpone that I, now i've seen that it was pulled off that site and there is also a newer version so if i would release that video i would be releasing video about the version one and there is currently version two version two is much better blah 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 but it's completely different so i've decided to scrap completely that Nope, Dan, nope. No AC. No, no. That's why uh, I'm nude. I'm just kidding. I'm not. Uh, that's why yeah, I'm sweating like crazy. I had a shower before the stream and I will definitely be getting a shower after the stream. It's good that these LED lights are not as warm as previously the normal lights were. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm really torn. I, I, there are a couple of projects that I really think deserve, deserve, um, people knowing about them and they are great and handy for the home automation users, be that home assistant or some other system. 
but most of them were done by by Russians and I don't like this washing culture but I also do not want to get another flame war in the chat and things like that like I had yesterday or two weeks ago or whatever because I don't care about politics I have my own views on a lot of things and I said some of my views here but I also think that if there is a good project and it's open source project and it's done in the whatever country not there that we can at least talk about it but yeah so that's a, that's why i'm very torn on, on doing or not those projects um yeah yeah <laughs> lucky you lucky you then lucky you yeah we have we have we have problem with the apartment maybe maybe if i ever ever reach 50k subscribers uh i will be i will be doing a apartment tour um the problem is that we are it's semi-open space apartment two-floor apartment i call this here area loft where i record and it's all the way open down down there is a living room connected with dining room connected with the kitchen all open space it's more or less one big one big open space here we have bedrooms and bathrooms they those are individual rooms and I can cool down the apartment in the evening downstairs, but I cannot cool it here up the upstairs. Downstairs I can have 22, 23 degrees, but it still keeps 25 degrees uh, here on top. If I would install air conditioning, AC, I would have to install it somewhere to keep, to try to cool down this area. I have already wires prepared and fuse prepared for the air conditioning to go behind here on the back wall but that wouldn't do the trick uh, and we were going back and forth on how to install how many ACs where to install and nobody can really tell us with 100% if the AC that would be installed downstairs would make air uh, circulate in the apartment should we put it at the highest point there in the apartment and make it just blow through the open space on the six i don't know how many two four five meters height and will that cool the place will it cool also the dining room if it cools up so that's that's that that were some of the issues we were going back and forth and also the because of the space and everything it has to be five plus kilowatts has to be six seven eight what eight kilowatt uh ac and above five the price goes up yeah lewis uh yeah he does he does lewis has a great content lewis has really great content uh what did he do last no mark mark what last did uh why um how to reuse akara sensors for bed uh jeff let's let's check my home assistant we can see so uh, automate your life had the outdoor smart patio lights you've always wanted Billy thinker has let's talk stream together uh make it work air has automated flow watering system mark what tech Hmm. Was this video released today? No, it didn't update. Why didn't update? I think Mark Watt, latest video from Mark Watt was the... Uh, uh, yeah, Aquara sensors. How to use Aquara sensors for bed sensors, as bed sensors. 
mostly Chris, the two absolutely easiest way to automate home assistant backups. Slacker Labs bring a galaxy to your smart home. This is video I wanted to do, this is video that I wanted to do year, year and a half ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm really envy that he did it before, but I was also lazy to order that one. Uh, it was Tuya device. And we talked about Tuya previously, and that's why I was really, you know, hesitant on ordering it. I'm not that comfortable with Tuya. I don't know. I feel something, you know, it's it's nothing, nothing that I can describe, but I will, I will always be keeping my eyes, you know, like, a smart home maker moving all my automations from home assistant to node red and tango tech if anybody knows who tango tech is he created double life treachery at the ranch uh johnny he wasn't actually on linux te tech tips his face was on linux tech tips on a web page they were browsing but yeah but yeah he was but really wasn't so uh i think that he was featured uh, uh uh i think that he was featured as um, as um, uh they were browsing through the content about the akara p1 sensor or something like that and it, there was his post on there so yeah he was featured <laughs> but i'm really glad it's really nice Yeah, it 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 then it's really it's really I really hope that that by the next summer uh if we survive this summer which barely just started we will get the IC. And funny thing is that I did a lot of mentions in my I have a lot of Tado equipment in my apartment. I have smart meters, smart smart valves, blah blah blah. And I did feature them in a couple of my videos, I think three or four or five, and I'm really happy with happy, uh, uh, happy owner of the Tado system, which is a proprietary system. Um, they approached me this summer and said, "Oh, listen, uh, do you have AC? If you have AC, we would like to send you the AC control unit from Tado." And I said, "No, I don't have it." <laughs> okay, listen, when you get the AC. <laughs> reach to us I said, yeah but i don't have ac <laughs> and i really wanted to play with that so anything else let's check uh, uh i managed to i managed to get my i managed to get my uh most of my esp homes working In just a second. I don't understand. What's that? Um, so I I managed to get most of my ESP homes working. That issue with Unify, I fixed it. Most of my uh, Hygro boards are now working. Um, I didn't have any issues even previously with the solar weather station. This is still, I finished it. So this project is currently done. Um, the only thing that was left to do was the rain part. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I just scrapped that part out. I removed it from the solar weather station. It doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't have rain uh, measuring anymore. Instead, I converted the rain device to use the Aquara, Aquara door window sensor. I removed read switch from the sensor and soldered the one in the rain gouge. And that's it. So this project is done. You wouldn't believe that I'm still waiting for the I'm still waiting for the new batteries. This this battery here is old battery. It's 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 had more than 500 600 cycles or I don't know how many. So this one cannot be used for permanent location. So I'm still waiting after 4 months for batteries to arrive. I will not be ordering new ones unless uh, before I get money back from the first order and I probably then buy it locally here. Um 
so this project is now done but i never had any issues and yes uh esp home devices that use sleep with the unify network have issues and sometimes they just don't want to connect and this is a known issue i also have the same issue with my vr it can take up to 20 retries for the network to connect uh, it receives authentication failure although the password is everything is okay just simply doesn't want to authenticate on unify network but i fixed it i've turned on my previous microtik uh, access point and now my my sensors are working okay so I really, I really don't know what to say. I know that a lot of people are using Unify, are very happy with it. Uh, but that is, that is Unify issue. Uh, it only has issues sometimes with IoT devices, which is like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I still have to. I will. I, will, I didn't update the latest version of firmware. I will be updating later today. Uh, access points to the latest firmware. I think it was released a couple of days or a week ago to see if it fixed. But it's, you know, I, I go from time, to, I'm not every day on Unify forums. I go from time to time, especially when there is a new release. Before I uh, install the latest release, I always go to forums and check if there are any issues with it. And you know, at the fifth or sixth, co fifth or sixth comment always says, I still have problem with IoT. And you need to go back to the firmware from 2020, whatever version that is. At this point, I don't really believe that they care. And from their perspective, I think that in their shoes, I would do the same. And I feel like Synology. I will put analogy with the Synology here. Uh, A lot of people hate version 7 and I will not mention that a lot of things that break between 7 and 7.1 and that's why my main setup is still at 6.2, my recording it at 7.0 because I've said multiple times don't update to the latest version of Synology at least for first couple of weeks, just read and, and read what people are posting because a lot of things usually change. First day of the update, my father called me and said, oh, listen, uh, my docker doesn't work anymore. What else didn't work? Oh, uh, I received notification that uh, I don't have paid license for something in surveillance station and that something will stop working at whatever. And I was like, what? I said, yeah, I updated it to 7.1. I said, why? Oh, I have automatic updates. I said, okay. We fixed everything, but you have to fix stuff. And I, I, I try to avoid fixing stuff if I, don't, if I don't want to. I was really this close to push my 6.2 system update to 7. And then came the 7.1 and I said, no way. I'm still sticking on the, on the, on the, on the 6.2. And my point and relation between Unify and Synology. You have a lot of people. Uh, you send a nice slick system that has very easy setup. If you have, you know, a couple of mobile phones, uh, Apple, um, Android phones, you have smart TVs, smart lock maybe or something that's connected to Wi-Fi. You have a nice app on your mobile phone. You connect your, your uh, uh, use cloud controller from Unify. It's really nice system to set up. It is a bit more expensive than, than, than some of the systems would be, but for majority of people, it works great. It's easy to set up. It has nice visuals, you know, Apple-like visuals or Google-like visuals. And, and that's it. And then come the, you know, prosumers, the worst kind of people. People that always try to get extra bit of whatever out of the equipment they use. Now, it cannot be just like, come on, just use this 
seven inch touch screen don't try to hack it no first thing even before the box came i already had ideas on how you how i would try to hack and do some other things that this box was not intended to be used and this is most what prosumers do synology had the same issue they were selling proprietary linux based devices with custom whatever that was intended to be your if you're a home user, you know, a location where you would hold your family photos, your documents, media center to stream music or videos, legally obtained music or videos, of course, um, then have download station and torrent client that would download the Linux installations because this is totally legal. So, you know, like normal users. And then came somebody said, oh, listen, if I stick the USB, uh, uh, DVB-T card, I would watch TV here. Oh, let's hack the kernel, let's install this, and, you know, I will be watching TV. Then the next one came, oh, let's stick in the Zigbee stick, let's stick the Z-Wave stick, let's stick the uh, RTL-STL stick, and let's do the Wi-Fi, let's do whatever. And you do it. So, for example, Teme, you do, or Johnny does it, or Mark does it, it works. You post something on the internet, then 10,000 other people see it. Oh, listen, you can watch TV and then 10,000 various USB DVB-T sticks get pushed and the support gets, listen, I have USB stick from this vendor, it doesn't work. I have USB stick. What you do as a company? Listen, we do not support USB sticks. If you want to connect something to USB, it has to be either UPS from the list of certified UPSs or a USB hard disk drive. And you eliminate a ton of support issues. We are probably doing the same thing to Unify, which are probably hating a lot of people because we just post IoT doesn't work still. Uh, you need to switch out of ISIS. Uh, no, um, I'm using, okay, so yeah, um, I'm using Mikrotik. I'm using Mikrotik as a router, which is hosting the hosting the blup, DHCP server for my network. So I have Unify, Unify switches, Unify access points, but my router is and will stay a Mikrotik. And I don't have that much issues with it, but I wouldn't recommend it if you are faint of heart, don't really know what you're doing and don't want to spend hours crying and trying to figure out something because it's not that obvious. As it should be. Um, I'm I'm also waiting for something. I never thought why would anybody want to buy that. Uh, I was promised I could get my hands on a test device for a couple of weeks. Synology, new latest Synology router. And I always had issues even even finding a good use case on why would you go out and buy a Synology router because you have Asus, you have Mikrotik, you have Unify, you have open whatever uh, open WRT hardware for example Seedwin or Seed now is selling some kind of hardware that has option to run open WRT uh, but then I, then I had chance to just see it and then I'll do a couple of clicks and it's really awesome idea you get partial Synology NAS which can even pretend to be NAS device it has package center you have option to install uh, you have option to install uh, uh, for example VPN server on it which I always found it very strange my VPN server was previously hosted on this Synology and I don't like hosting VPN on this device. I would rather host it towards the edge of my network where it's supposed to be. Yeah, routing is great, but I would like to keep it, you know, out. And and these these are a couple of good cases for the for the Synology router. But on the other hand, I don't know how it handles stuff. And if I would go that way, then I would probably be using also LDAP on that Synology router. I would also be using VPN, DHCP, everything would be there because 
Synology does have really nice LDAP, it does have really nice VPN server, although it doesn't have some modern options for the VPN, which I know that I will probably get slammed because of saying that. But it's still okay, uh, VPN and um, DHCP server can be can be good. Um, as Johnny said, Mikrotik is great, but I had to reinstall it at least four or five times. It was not in, so I've set it up uh, on my network, but it was still not exposed outside. I think that I factory set it three or four times. And the overall process of installing Mikrotik took me six months. Not every day. I would just hit some kind of bottleneck and I would rage quit. And then two months later, I would come back after talking with my colleagues at the work, set up something, then again, rage quit it. So it took me really long time. It's now working. I don't touch it that much if I don't have to, but some things are really so stupid to set up. And it's it's the, it's, it's the great device. You can get Mikrotik for, for 25 euros, I think the lowest of course model but it's awesome device and uh, yeah 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 so uh whoa i'm out of booze maybe i should get maybe i should get myself some whiskey or something so should we wrap up uh, let me check something here. Oh, how I hate when it's so non-responsive. So, uh, almost eight o'clock. Um, <laughs> Johnny, yeah. Um, I, I, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Really do feel your pain. I, I don't know. I know. I understand. I have. I, I, I had. I worked with a company that was mostly networking company. So, eighty-five percent of the people were doing just networking, all types of networking, but just networking. And when I would mention something like, not Unify, but something like similar to Unify, which are you now web interfaces, like no command line interface. No, who would do such a thing and not work in a in a, in a device that has UI? You have to work in a terminal. Um, yeah. So, uh, question: What I uh, what host are what host are you running uh, HA on, mate? So I have main setup, which is this screen here, and that's uh, Synology nine twenty in the virtual machine. That's one. Then I have. This one here, this is Synology uh, for 1.5 plus, also in virtual machine. Then I have on the same machine Docker. Then I have this test setup. This is, come on, wake up. This is Home Assistant Supervise. Uh, running on Raspberry Pi 4, but I hope to also try and run it on a Raspberry Pi 0, 2, Raspberry Pi 0 W2 or Raspberry Pi 2 0, nah, I don't know what's the name. And I also have one additional system running on, this is Raspberry Pi 4, I have one additional running on Raspberry Pi 3. That's it. I'm all out of home assistance. Uh, yeah, that's it. Plus. I've just fixed this Intel NUC and I will probably be installing also directly Home Assistant uh, supervised on it. Previously, I had Proxmox, which was also running Xpenology, which is fake Synology. And in the fake Synology, I have been running Home Assistant and also had also on that machine Docker, running Home Assistant in Docker. And I also have one additional Home Assistant running on the main setup, which is currently down. It's a Docker setup. I probably will never ever, I will probably remove it. 
no uh no no uh it's it's okay um on 920 let's see this one here just give me a second just give me a second oh i already had it open okay okay so this here this is the recording setup it's also running brigade so it has esp home uh frigate running a recipe for the voice assistant offline uh uptime kuma and yeah this one is offline that's all running in uh in a uh, in, uh, virtual machine and this is the host it's using 4 gigs of RAM I've given it 2 cores it's okay people, uh, people are sometimes afraid to push the, the, the CPU over 20% CPUs are here to work at 80% 75% 85% that's no issue for the CPUs of course they have to have proper cooling so yeah uh, as I said it's running even Freegate it has besides Freegate also a couple of cameras there so I don't have and this is very old machine this is uh, the this is the Synology DS415 it's running virtual machine on hardware that officially doesn't support running virtual machine I don't have a uh, Home Assistant Blue. I didn't order Home Assistant Yellow. But yeah. Auto, um, when I was talking about Synology router and I said that people will tell me, yeah, that's why I said, unfortunately, Synology router still supports OpenVPN and something else but it's very limited in terms of vpn protocols or standards or trends or whatever and i think that they will not be embedding uh pf sense that soon i think that mikrotik also is not going to embed it because it has to be embedded on the kernel level i know that for the mikrotik there were some talks about getting it in but i don't think that even the latest firmware has it on itself uh emmc storage yeah um uh, i'm i'm pretty happy you know for whatever for whatever reason um i'm really happy with most of my sit setups i'm experiencing some issues for the last 10 days with my recording setup i have to figure out if it's my mistake or something is off it's been it 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 can lag then it lags for hour or something it's still responsive but it just takes a little bit longer for some of the actions um so i have to check what's going going on there um but i'm pretty happy with with boot up time of my main setup and my main setup let me just quickly look it here I will not be bothering you it has two two and a half thousand entities one one and a half thousand so one thousand four hundred sensors thirty thousand lines of yaml code and from the add-ons that's not much there no add-ons are okay uh, the boot up time so shutdown and boot up is around two minutes and i'm not sure exactly what time because i have also one delay that delays all the actions in home assistant until 30 seconds after home assistant has completely started up so i'm i'm pretty okay with that uh bare bones get okay frigate yeah um i'm having issues with the frigate i'm also pushing it on the synology d 
disk station. Uh, on the version 7 I'm having issues that it gets disconnected from time to time and that from time to time can be between a couple of hours or a couple of days. It never lasted longer than a week. It's also no known issue but you cannot get any kind of uh, support more or less for that because yeah, uh, USB sticks are officially not supported on the Synology. But as I said, this setup here, this setup here that you see on the screen is, come on, I don't see it. You see it, but I don't see it. This setup here is uh, running uh, Freegate with the Google Coral on the virtual machine inside Synology version 7. I cannot show because I think that my family members are outside. But I should definitely be wrapping up this. Um, Niksha, thank you once again for 50 kunas. Uh, I really would like to thank, I really would like to thank everybody. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is melting. But it's getting cooler outside not inside outside is cool I, I just have to kill those lights i can already see this, these are leds they don't emit that much heat but i can already feel the heat coming uh so thanks everybody for joining next week will be mail day video there are a couple of fun stuff in the in the mail day video and week after that let me just check my schedule yeah, week after that, so 9th will be the next stream. Then I will be going on a vacation. So week after that, there will be no video. I probably, if I manage to record video in advance, I will do it. Then once again, I will be back for three weeks here. Then once again for the vacation. Uh, everybody. Thank you for joining the stream. I hope it was okay. Um, if you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on the Discord, Twitter, leave it in the YouTubes. Don't hate uh, Automate. Who says that? Don't hate Automate. Somebody, somebody has, don't hate Automate. Okay, brain. Thanks, everybody, and I will be seeing you next week. Uh, will be SwitchBot video with the SwitchBot giveaway because SwitchBot is having some kind of sale. Uh, I have to release a video on two cameras uh, from the SwitchBot. There will be giveaway for one camera. After that, I have zero idea what I'll be recording, but there is a bunch of stuff, and I will probably find something. Maybe, 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 maybe finally this uh, seven-inch uh, screen. How do you wrap up the stream? I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun. <laughs>